welcome to worship. No matter where you are, whatever time of the day, we welcome you. And today we celebrate Bible Sunday. To donate to the Scottish Bible Society, you can either send a cheque made out to the Scottish Bible Society to Elaine, or if you wish, you can donate online. And the deta details for that will be on the final slide of the service. Our call to worship. In every generation, the people of God have been blessed to find their home and resting place in God. We gather to worship and praise the God of all people. All creation since time began have been blessed to find that the place of their birth is their creator's hands. We gather to worship the God of all creation. We gather to worship and praise our God and to ask God to fill us with the joy of your unfailing love. May the favour and blessing of God be upon us this day. Amen. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you that before the world was made, you were there. As we live our lives today, you are there. From everlasting to everlasting, you are our ever, never changing God. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness that has been shown to us from generation to generation. Thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Heavenly Father, day by day you demonstrate your unfailing love to us as we reflect on the love, compassion, grace and mercy given to us every new morning. We bow down before you and worship. Teach us, Lord, to number our days and grant us hearts of wisdom and understanding. Help us to mature in our faith, grow in grace and come to a deeper understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the favour of the Lord our God rest upon us, establishing the work that he has given us to do. Now we pray in the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Today's Bible reading comes from the Old Testament, Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations, before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning, though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. You are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is seventy years, or eighty, if we have the strain. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due to you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendour to their children. May the favour of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of your hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. And may God bless the reading of this his holy word. Amen. This is Bible Sunday, a day when we give thanks to God for his word. Psalm 90 talks about God always having been there before space, stars and dinosaurs. There has never been a time when God didn't exist. Amazing. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. How important is God's word to you? Do you seek God's message for yourselves daily? We are so blessed to have our own Bible, whether it be NIV, Good News, Message, New English Version, whatever version, it's all God's word. There are an amazing total of 7,000 354 languages in the world. The Bible has been translated into 700 languages, the New Testament into 1,549, and portions of Scripture into 1,162. That leaves 3,948 languages that have no Scripture at all. The Bible societies throughout the world continue to translate God's word, even in this difficult time of COVID-19. In Vietnam, the Bonong Christians are still waiting for the Bible in their own language. In Zambia, the New Testament is being translated into Ning Angji language. They are praying that they will be able to have 10,000 copies printed on schedule by the end of 21, 2021. The Scottish Bible Society are busy preparing material for children online during this time of lockdown. There are so many Bible societies all over the world carrying on this great work. I really do appreciate, as I'm sure you do too, having my own Bible in a language that I can understand. How would it feel if you're trying to read something that wasn't in English. 
But of course, the Bible societies need funding to carry out this great work of translation. If you're able to make a donation to this work, please send a cheque to Elaine La Ramage, made out to the Bible Society, the Scottish Bible Society, or direct to Scottish Bible Society. The address will be on the screen at the end of the service. It would be good to think of a lovely smile you will help to put on someone's face as they get their own Bible presented to them. Thank you everyone for your donations. This morning's sermon is based on resources from the Scottish Bible Society. Have you noticed how in families we tend to pass on things from generation to generation? Granny's remedies for the cold and for the flu, advice about how to drive the car in the snow, the exact and proper order of dinner and present opening on Christmas Day, ways of living in the world that speak of our values, telling the truth, what makes a good friend, how we should treat others. This psalm, written by Moses over 3,000 years ago, speaks about generations in its opening verses. It's full of truths about God and about us. These truths have been declared and passed down from generation to generation of God's people. It asks some big questions. How we, are we to approach this life when our lives are so short? How are we to live in the face of the truth that we all die? How can we live with a holy and just God when our sin is laid before him? The psalmist gives us three big answers to pass on to the next generation. Firstly, making God our home. Psalm opens with a stunning declaration. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. This is the grounding truth the anchor for everything else that the psalmist will see. 
when Moses declares that God has been our dwelling place, he is saying that God has been a place of refuge, a place of safety and shelter for his people. Generation after generation of God's people have made God their home. Each generation of God's people come to believe this truth about God and experience it for themselves. This does not happen by accident. This shared truth and experience of God must be passed on from one generation to the next. The verses that follow raise some of the big questions of life. The fact that God can be our dwelling place turns out to be the most incredible and wonderful surprise. Moses declares that God is eternal. God existed in eternity before the earth was formed. To God, a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. By contrast, our human life is finite. Our lives have a limit. We too are creations of God who have a beginning, given life by God, and our lives have an end, as God also brings our lives to a close in death. Death silences any pride or boasting in who we are or what we have done. In this context, the psalmist reflects on other truths about God and about us that seem to throw into question the possibility of any relationship with God. God is holy and just, and his wrath is poured out on us because of our sin. The shortness of our lives, death and the frustration this brings are all the result of sin. The psalm speaks of God's judgment on our sin, in which God returns us to the dust from which we are made. There's no hiding place from God. No escape from his judgment. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence, he says. Before any generation of God's people can come to know the truth and experience of God as dwelling place, as refuge, they need to deal with these truths, the holiness of God, the reality of our sin, and God's right judgment on us because of that sin. How, given these truths about God and about us, can we possibly find our home in God? The answer is the compassion and unfailing love of God. In the fullness of time, God revealed his astonishing plan to draw us back to him and deal with our sin in and through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the answer to our sin and to all its consequences in our lives and in our world. Because of Jesus, God can be our dwelling place, a place of refuge, safety and security. Through Jesus, our brief earthly lives expand into eternity. Death is overcome and life, rather than being futile, is imbued with meaning as we are gathered into God's eternal purposes. Secondly, we need to learn to live wisely. Verses 11 and 12 show us how to approach life in light of these truths about God and about ourselves. But the key verse is verse 12. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. While life is short and can lead to a sense of futility, there's something worth gaining. The heart of wisdom is not something we can merely pick up at the supermarket and add to our lives. It is the result, the product of investing our days our lives in the right way. Wisdom in the Bible is always associated with God. In Proverbs it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. To be wise is to reflect who God is, to mirror his actions. It is to live our lives in light of the revelation of God. That this wisdom comes from God is expressed in the opening words of the psalmist's prayer. Teach us. Learning to use life wisely is about learning from God how to live in his good creation. It requires our time and our attention. We need to invest our days, our lives in pursuit of God and his ways. Here, of course, is the challenge for each and every generation. There are no shortage of voices seeking to influence how we use our time and that, and that want us to give them our attention. Our teens today learn as much from Google and YouTube as they do in the classroom or in the home. And it's not just teenagers who are in danger of seeking guidance from life from the internet. 
We are surrounded by information, but not much wisdom. The Bible insists that wisdom comes from God. But the good news is that God throughout the generations of human history has continually and consistently revealed himself. God is not hiding from us. He is not keeping wisdom hidden away. It's all there in the Bible. If there is any habit that helps with this learning of wisdom, that yields this harvest of wisdom in our hearts, then it is reading the Bible. Through the Bible, God speaks to us about all of life. It may not contain exact references to COVID-19, electric cars, Brexit, or global, global warming, but in every generation, God's people have found the Bible a faithful guide to knowing God, through which God shows them how to reflect who God is in their lives and respond wisely to the challenges of their generation. I wonder, are we reading the Bible for ourselves, listening each day to God's voice? And how are we doing in passing on a Bible reading habit to the next generation? In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses, the author of Psalm 90, talks about how to get a Bible habit into the lives of each generation. It involves making what God says the heart of family life and finding ways to have conversations about what God says so that God's words gets into our hearts. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. In a noisy world clamouring for our attention, we need to find time, space and ways to prioritise God's words, God's voice in our lives. This, says Moses, is how to live life well, turning to God listening to his voice and allowing him to produce wisdom in our hearts, to allow God to form us in his image so that we might reflect who he is to the world around us. And finally, letting God fill each day. What does a life look like when God is our dwelling place and we allow God to teach us how to live? Verses 13 to 17 give us a wonderful picture. Moses has reminded us that our days pass so quickly that we have got to use each one wisely. But now he tells us that every day has the potential to be filled with God and with the satisfaction, love, joy and gladness that come from God. He begins by talking about mornings. Moses prays to God, satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. No matter what life can throw at us, no matter our circumstances, to wake up each day and be met with the unfailing love of God brings satisfaction. The, wo the word satisfy speaks here of fullness, of, of plenty. It is often used of food, but throughout scripture it means being filled, having plenty and being satisfied with God's good gifts. Notice, this is not about theoretical knowledge. This is about experiencing in our lives an overwhelming sense of fullness and, satisf and satisfaction that comes to us because we are loved unfailingly by God. Moses writes of the impact that experiencing God's unfailing love for us each morning brings. It causes us to sing for joy and be glad all our days. Moses then imagines this love of God overflowing throughout our lives into our past present and future. Moses prays that in that this experience of God's love and the gladness it brings may flow like a massive tidal wave that wipes away the days and years in which we experience affliction or trouble. And finally he speaks of seeing God revealed in our lives and having a sense of purpose in our lives. The word Moses uses to discuss both these things is work. First God's work. Moses Moses prays, may your deeds or your work be shown to your servants, your splendour to their children. The request here is that God's work in history, his presence and activity amongst us might be revealed. And not just to us, but to the next generation. Here is what feeds faith the most, experiencing the presence and the power of God in our everyday lives. Here too is the key to passing on faith to the next generation. 
We don't just tell our children stories about God. They are to live the story of faith with us. Through our shared experience of God together, our children come to know God for themselves and put their faith in him. Secondly, our work. Moses twice prays that our work might be established and last. Our lives may be short, but they can have a lasting impact on the world we leave behind. We need God's presence and help in this, which is why Moses prays, may the favour of the Lord our God rest upon us. The word favour can mean beauty, delightfulness, pleasantness. The delightfulness and beauty of the Lord's presence in our lives is the context in which we do our work. Work that because God is present with us and within us in all his wonder and power will have a lasting impact. It's a stunning vision of life, a constant sense of God's unfailing love, experiencing gladness and joy this brings, seeing God in our lives and in our world and watching God reveal himself to a new generation and calling them to faith, giving our lives and our work over to God and through his presence seeing him weave our activity into something that makes an impact for eternity. This powerful prayer of Moses is about life. These are not theories to be understood. This is an experience of life to be lived. The challenge and the opportunity is to allow God to fill each day of our lives with his wonderful life-giving presence. What truths about God and about life are we passing on to the next generation? Ultimately, this psalm reminds us that the most valuable thing we have to leave with our children is not our material wealth, memories, or even our good advice, but the shared experience of God's activity in our lives. Faith in Christ is their great inheritance, which we have a responsibility to pass on as together we focus on making God our home, learning to live wisely, and letting God fill each day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one true God, now and evermore. Amen. At this point, we remember our offerings, and if possible, please continue to give these, in, either by sending a cheque to Elaine, by setting up a standing order, or donating on the Church of Scotland website. So let us pray. Generous God, we thank you for all that you have given us. Please accept our offerings and use them for the work of your church. Use us to spread the message of your love from generation to generation. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, you are our dwelling place and you have given us refuge, even though we often go our own way, thinking we know best. Your love for us is unfailing and we thank you. You have instructed us to spread your message from one generation to the other. We pray for our young folk, that their hearts will be open to receive you. Help us, Lord, as we tell them your story and help us to live as a good example. You have commissioned us to spread your word to all corners of the earth. We pray for the work of the Scottish Bible Society and Bible societies around the world as they try to reach others with your word. Help us to do our part in supporting them. We bring our prayers for a troubled world, fractured by war, poverty, terrorism, drugs, alcohol, racism and many more ills. Come Holy Spirit, come and bring peace and healing. We bring our prayers for our world suffering through COVID-19. We pray for those who are ill and those suffering long-term effects from this virus. We ask your protection for all caring for those who are ill. Help those who are looking for cures and vaccinations. Give them wisdom and insight. We pray too for the many difficulties folk are facing. Loss of jobs, businesses, lack of money to provide the basics for their families. Be alongside them. May the charities helping them have enough to go round and help us to play our part. We pray for those who have other medical needs where treatment has been delayed. We ask your comfort in those whose mental health is suffering due to the restrictions. Be with the Prime Minister, First Minister and leaders of all nations. Help them to take the hard decisions to keep their people safe. May all in government put political issues to one side and work together in this crisis. 
Help us, Lord, to be there for one another. Keep us diligent in adhering to the restrictions. Open the eyes of those who flaunt the rules, that they see the danger they are putting themselves and others in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us, those we love and those we struggle to love, now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>